So um, I may not be American born confused Desi, but I'm certainly confused Desi. And, and you would know from my resume because uh, every five years it seems like I change my job or my profession and drastically because I'm really confused as to what I want to do. Um, so um, with that, I think IIT really, really looking back, um, all of us deep down can absolutely with certainty say that IIT definitely changed all of us. We were somebody before we came to IIT and IIT definitely changed us because all of us took different things. To me, it was two major things. One was problem solving. Unlike my my high school, where you learned something and you were given answers and you got graded on that, in IIT we saw a tremendous number of every classroom, every time there was a problem and we had to solve it. And uh, so I think it became ingrained, in, at least in my mind, that hey, I could solve problem. The second one was a very fast track. Uh, learning in the sense of w when I would start a class, I would think, oh my god, I don't know anything about that a particular subject. But at the end of semester, which was not that far, three, four months later, you really felt with the consistent hard work and, and uh, a lot of bull sessions, if you remember those, you, you came back and said, you know what, I know a lot about it. Uh, so the confidence you developed in that environment where you said, you know, in a very short time, I can learn a lot. Uh, definitely shaped, shaped my, my life. And of course, uh, most important one I think all of us would say is, we made absolutely the best friends um, any man can ever have. Uh, so those are the contributions of IIT. And I think taking back to something from Anil had said, Anil Bhandari, uh, um, we owe it, just like to our parents, we, to, to make sure that they are, they are doing well, they are taken care of, just like we give to our temple, our God, just the way we like to see our kids do better. Similarly, I think we owe it to IIT Kanpur for us to take care of them, small, large, or your own passion but I think we owe it to do something for them. Giving you, you know, I'm the other extreme of uh, uh, Professor Jane and Professor Agarwal, and I just want to emphasize on that fact that it doesn't matter, you know, there are a lot of us like Anil Pandari and myself and, uh, um, you know, Sanjeev. We may have done engineering. We don't have to, we, what we have learned is that we have been fairly decent contributing part member of the society. And we really didn't have to take that engineering and become expert in just one minor field. We became expert in different things and, uh, and, and, and of course I'm one of the cases where I've gone from pure engineering to having nine patents early on to uh, marketing computers to, to real estate and then uh, you know starting a bank. Uh, uh, fairly different, uh, different things. So, what I've learned is, you put your mind to it, you consistently work hard, and have confidence in yourself. You literally can do anything you want to. So, I, I hope um, um, from all of us we can we can learn from each other. But the main thing here is, we must support our family, and IIT Kanpur is definitely my family. So, thank you. Thanks, Anil. Uh, our next speaker is Deepak Kagula, uh, who is founder of Meta Capital Management, a fund management company specializing in mortgage-backed securities. Its flagship mortgage opportunities fund was ranked as the top performing fund in the Bloomberg Top 100 hedge fund rankings in 2012, for funds managing over $1 billion. Earlier, Deepak was managing director and head of two mortgage-backed securities, trading desks at Lehman Brothers. Deepak holds a PhD in management science from Columbia University, B.Tech in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur. 
In addition, we have taught courses at Columbia Business School. Thank you. Um, I'll actually pick up on the thread that Professor Anger from Professor Anger's talk about making choices and then actually talk about some of the choices I made and maybe actually see if you know there's something that at least in terms of my experience at IIT, I have thoughts on what could have been done better or differently. Maybe one of the things I think is you know the many of choices that is available to graduates, how that could be expanded. It's something that you know the school could think about, and I'm trying to you know work towards that in terms of you know at least what I have to say. So I actually got to IIT by accident. I, I wanted to study economics. I, I applied at St. Stephen's College in Delhi, and I got in, and I thought that was it. Until I discovered that I managed to get into JE, and I was accepted for electrical engineering at IIT. So I, I went to IIT. I was there for a week, and I said. I'm in Kanpur, where is this? I'm going back to Delhi. And I did. I left IIT and said, I'm done. I went back, spent a few days in Delhi, and at the end of it, was convinced, not by my family, but my friends really, that it was a mistake. And I made the choice to come back to Kanpur. And to this day, I think that was the right decision. I have great memories. I learned a lot. It helped me do, do things in life that I, I think the training was, was very solid. And in five years that I was there, I think are amongst the best memories and it kind of very solid training which all of us have received. But I still have had a love for, you know, I wanted to study economics and actually that's one of the things I would say, you know, in terms of curriculum design. When I was at IIT, we had to take humanity courses. And I took sociology, I took psychology, there was no course in economics. I hope there is one now. There's an undergraduate program in economics. Oh, even better, even better yet. And so things have come a long way. I mean, this is talking graduating in 85 and it would have been a great choice that we had at that time, because it's wonderful that it's available now, that there is that choice available. And at, at the end of my, my, my BTAC, I made the choice that I'm going to go and study business. And I have decided that I really want to study something that I can really, you know, understand. And I, I enrolled in a PhD program. And it was the long haul. It wasn't an MBA. And I made the choice. I was fortunate. I got, got into Columbia Business School. And I, I studied management science, which is operations research, and I studied finance. So four years, I was in the PhD program, I got my PhD, and, and learned a lot about while I was there. I would say the training from IIT came in very handy. I mean, the coursework was a piece of cake. There was, these are PhD level courses in the Department of Math, Engineering, Business. There were some pretty hard courses in economics and in stochastic calculus. Really, the coursework was a piece of cake. I mean, getting an A was really not a hard thing at all. It's the training we had from IIT. This is what we could do really well. Problem solving, understanding, new, new, new texts and new subjects. Really, we were trained to do that really well. When it came time to pick a thesis topic, it was really hard. And that's my other advice, is, you know, or suggestion is that if there is a way to encourage more creativity from the get-go, we are great problem solvers. You give us you know, any quiz, we will crack it. What you need to do to be successful in life, I think, is one, you have to be more creative. And I think that should be encouraged from the get-go. We didn't really have that when I was there. I mean, the BTEC project came, in the, I was the last of the five-year batch. The BTEC project came in the fifth year. The projects we did in the first four years, really, there wasn't much on our creativity. It was about getting 10.0. That's what you wanted. You wanted to get those A's. And it was, you know, making sure when the surprise quiz comes, you ace it, right? And that's great. I think those are very good skills to kind of, you know, inculcate. But you really need to, you know, find ways to make, this is the best of the country that's coming there. You need to basically channel their creativity and then come up with ways to incentivize them. And I think the U.S. schools do a much better job over there. I have two kids, my older one now is in college, and I see how much more creative they are than what I was. And it's, it's taken me a while to even focus on that to be able to take the risks and make the choices that are risky choices that can really play into those, those strengths that, that I, I had from the education that I had. Anyway, after I finished my PhD, the, the easy choice was to be a professor. That's what was expected. And I made the choice that I was going to try something different. And I, I got a job on Wall Street. It paid more money and definitely influenced the decision. But it was more exciting. It was the real world. And I, I went and I worked at Lehman Brothers for 11 years. And I was there in research, and I was there in trading, and then it was really good memories at Lehman. But after 11 years, I made the choice that I'm going to do something on my own. And I said, I'm my own fund. That's 12 years ago. And each of these choices, when I look back, I 
can say, you know, I, I made choices that were fairly risky. And, and in the context of the choices that were available, and I, I think that's, it, it actually played out to be really well. Taking risks actually worked really well. And that would be another suggestion I have for you know, the faculty that, that find a way for the brightest that show up there to be able to evaluate risks and take risks. I mean, we, we really didn't have much in, in terms of coursework in, in, in decision sciences and probability. There was there some, but you know, I think a lot more of that would actually go a long way because these are really bright people and if they could make some risky choices where they could channel their creativity, you could actually end up with not, not people who are very good at what they do in the companies that they work in, but who are actually leaders who can actually, they're, they're, they're company founders, they're, they're really going out there and taking risks. I mean, Steve Jobs is an easy example, obviously, to take, right, in terms of channel creativity, but there is no reason why that shouldn't be coming out of the IITs. And, and so, it, it's, I, I look back at, at you know, what I did, I, I think I, I, I made, along the way, some, some safe choices, but I made a lot of risky choices, and the risky choices actually worked out to be really good choices because I had good training. And then if you have people who have good training that take risks, chances are, you know, you're gonna get some good stuff that comes out of it. And, and certainly, you know, there's a way to kind of encourage that, I think. If I look at, you know, all the friends I have from IIT, if I look at people that I've known over the years, I think they're really smart. If I look at what they've managed to, where they managed to get in life, I feel that they haven't really stepped out and kind of played to their best potential. And that is because we have been inherently risk averse. And I wonder why, why is that you know, we make choices that are risk averse. Maybe that's the way humans are. But you know, if you see in America, there is a lot of risk taking. And if there's some way to encourage that, I think that, that would be a suggestion, you know, from my side. So I won't, I won't say any more. Delighted to be here this evening. It's really wonderful to see, you know, people come together. I've been in New York for a long time and it's I've been waiting to see when, you know, ID Comfort will put something together and it's yeah, and in terms of contributing, I think we owe all owe a lot to IIT and, and you know, this is an opportunity to give back and I would strongly encourage everyone to do that. Thanks, Deepak. Uh, our last speaker is Tarimbi Singh, who is a 2006 IIT Kanpur graduate in computer science, who is currently a partner at Tower Research Capital, which he joined as an algorithmic trader. Tower develops proprietary trading statistical met methodologies to identify non-random patterns in the behavior of markets. He has worked at Tower on developing quantitative trading strategies for future options, equities, fixed income currencies, and commodities since 2006. <laughs> and he's loaded. I would just like to start with a brief, uh, like a confession. Like uh, when I got an email from Rakesh and Achal that like uh, they were trying to speak on this panel, I was like, I'm just a 27 year old kid, six years, seven years out of college, and like uh, I don't belong in this group of senior distinguished alumni. And uh, Achal was like, No, we want a different point of view from a younger alumni. And like, uh, okay, fine, I will do it. <laughs>